Hey guys, Nick from Merck Media here, and today I'm going to be showing you my workflow for how I edit a live event. I'm going to be using Premiere Pro, but the beauty with this is that you don't have to use Premiere. You can use Final Cut, Avid, whatever you like. This is just my basic workflow for how I set up uh, two cameras, sync them together with some separate audio tracks, and cut it, it, cut it together in almost real time. Kind of like setting up a multicam sequence, but I don't normally do a multicam sequence. Not for something that's this basic. So let's get started. But before we get started, a second to interrupt. I'm going to interrupt myself and talk about Ignite Guelph. This is the event that I'm going to be editing today. Ignite Guelph is an event that I help organize a couple times a year with a few others in town here. It's a, it's a lot like TED Talks is what it is. A bunch of speakers get up, only they have five minutes to talk. So it's like TED Talks, but a lot shorter. It's a really great night, so if you're local to the area, I highly suggest you get a ticket, come on out. The next event that we're putting on is going to be in March. Uh, the site needs to be updated, but it's going to be coming up. Uh, the details will be, will be released about uh, when in March and how you can get tickets. I highly suggest that you do. Uh, for now, we're going to be editing last fall's videos. So let's jump back into Premiere. So what I've got set up here is I've edited, I've cut together all of the videos except for the very last one. So you're going to be joining me as I cut together the last video of this series before it gets posted online. So here are all the sequences I've got set up. I'll show you my bin setup right here. This is just a basic setup how I set it up in either Final Cut or Avid or Premiere, it doesn't matter. But this is what you see here. One bin for audio, one bin for footage, one bin for images, and one for sequences. In footage, I've got separated into camera A and camera B footage. The audio, I've got the two tracks since the, uh, the PA recorded the speakers, uh, but there was a break, uh, mid, a mid, uh, break at the midpoint throughout the evening. So we have to go through and find those segments of audio that we need to use and then all the sequences that I've cut together so far. So first, I'm going to be adding a new sequence here. Settings are the same. Ignite Guelph 2. And I've got to jump into here to get the speaker's name. So these are all, all, the, these are all the speakers that spoke at the last event. So Jen Popkey. I'm going to bring that back in here, copy and paste, so that I know that I don't misspell it spell Jen's name right. Okay, so we've got our empty sequence here. I'm going to get rid of this one. So first things first, we're going to go through and grab our footage. So go grab camera A and the track we're looking for is 18. Oh, there she is. So since we have no sync point, we have no slate, nobody clapped at the beginning, there's no specific sound to sync up all the audio. Uh, it's really easy either find something, a sound that happens early on that you can use to sync up or you can just uh, grab it from the very beginning when she first starts to speak and kind of shift tracks around until it sounds like they line up. So she's just taking the stage here. She's very quiet. So I'm going to try and look for that specific point where... So she kind of starts out by saying, it's hard, I guess, to follow up your bio, is I guess what she's talking about. So there we grabbed our in point. We use that there, set it up. So it's going to go on the first audio and first video track. Boom, down she goes. Now we're going to be targeting the next tracks, grab the next camera's footage which is track 8922. I found all these beforehand. Okay, there we go. And find where she where she first starts speaking there. Boom, down she goes. Now we want the audio track. So, we're going to target the next audio track in the sequence. Go into our audio. And this is the big mess that we're looking at right here. So I have to listen through for when her voice comes in. That's definitely her. And there we go. So drop it down. At this point, I'll zoom out to the full sequence. 
And what we can then start doing is shifting the tracks around so that it sounds like they're all synced up. Actually scratch that. The first thing I'm going to do here is this is how I'm going to set it up so that I can edit it in real time very quickly. So we're going to go into effect controls. This is how I just set this up very quickly. I'm going to set this to 50% its size, put it up in this corner here. Do the same thing for this one, but put it down here. There we go. And it doesn't sound too far off. Good thing with this is that you can always adjust the entire track's alignment to the audio later, if need be. I'm just gonna back that one up a little bit, a couple frames. Even just a couple frames, you can notice when it's off. And actually, I'm gonna mute the two cameras audio, audio tracks because the cameras are further back, so there is gonna be a very slight delay. So you will hear a slight delay, but we're just looking to see if it syncs up with her mouth movements. Okay, it looks like it matches the bottom one. Um, I'm just going to set this one back to full screen because it's hard to see her mouth. And it looks good. So back we go. So now we can start cutting. So I'm going to mute these two tracks. I'm not going to use the camera audio at all because it sounds gross. And I'm going to grab my razor tool, lock down the audio tracks so that we don't cut them, we don't adjust them at all, and then just start playing it through. So from here, all I have to do is slice at each point I want to make a cut. You just have to keep track of which video track that you're on, and it'll make sense in a little bit. These are the things that I'm looking for. See how up in the upper left here, the camera's still shifting around. That's my camera, by the way. The camera's still shifting around, so it's not a good... Uh, not a good angle to be on, so I want to avoid that. I'll wait till it stops. Wait till it settles. Most important element to a story, because it described then that the actions. It's in fact the most important thing was in fact the most. There, so cut that, and now fades in on her. Even that camera's a little bit shaky. So I remember learning years ago. But it's better. And from here, I'm listening through to points in her speech. So you just gotta feel when is a good point to cut to the wide, when's a good time to cut to the close up. Uh, if at any point the cameras are trying to shift, they start to move around, it's not a very good angle, or she, you know, uh, speakers tend to move back and forth as they talk, so if she ducks out of frame, you want to avoid that. So we're looking at points where the camera is a bad angle to be on, but we're also looking at, in her talk, when would be a good time to cut to the wide, or back to the close-up, depending on the feel, the feel of her talk. Okay, so I just feel like that's a good point to cut back to the close-up, so you can even just let it play. I'm taking a little bit more time to explain this, but normally this is pretty much like real-time cutting, because I can cut that and it'll just keep playing. And I try to never cut on a gap, if that makes any sense. So in between... Uh, at the end of her sentence, at the be at the very beginning of a sentence, I try not to cut right on that. It's a little bit too jarring. You get a feel for this as you edit a little bit more, but I try to look for a point in mid-speech so to make the cut a little bit more fluid, so it's less jarring. But I can't contribute to it. It's like listening to a radio talk show program, but I can never call in. So a lot of people may say, well, I'm gonna cut there and cut that angle. It just, seem, it just seems too segmented, it seems uh, too neat, so I'm trying to look for a more organic point to make that cut. Okay, so I'm tr I just feel like that point where she says, where I can never call in, so on I, I just made a cut, that's where it's kind of intuitive, where you just gotta feel where is the right point to make a cut. Um, and you can always change it up later. It happened, but so I'm gonna get rid of that. It's like listening to a radio talk show program, but I can never call in. That just feels like it flows a little bit better, and we're not cutting right at the end of her point. 
uh, we just the cut then seems seamless. That's the idea that you want to go for, so that people don't notice that we've switched angles. Can I tell you though, there are times I feel like I'm caught behind glass. Knock me on it, please. Beg. That just seems like a good time to come back to the wide as she's doing that movement there. You can see that full body movement that she has there. There's one day it took everything I could not to break the glass. I was it took everything I could not to break the there's there's one day it took everything I could not to break the glass. So there I was just looking for the word there's took. So day, it took. Usually I won't cut right at the beginning or end of a sentence, but I'll look for a few words glass. in, so it took. It's just it's if you try to try to look for an edit point of point to make that cut that isn't at the very beginning or end of the sentence, but is even a, just a couple words in, even just one word in. So instead of cutting on it, cutting on it, it, it took or you know three words in or or something like that. It it uh, instantly makes it feel a little bit more organic. You're not cutting when the person is cutting their sentences. So if you look at their dialogue, their sentences, uh, like a script, like a movie, it's already been cut up. So whenever there's a period, there's a cut. So if you put a cut in your video, it's gonna look very noticeable because not only are they seeing the cut on the screen in your editing, but they're also hearing it in the person's words. So that's why you try not to cut when the speaker cuts. It was a few minutes late for class, but the funeral was had. So just like that, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, I'm almost finished here, but I'm just going to fast forward through to the end because this is pretty much how I'm going to cut the rest of it. But you can see just how I've been going about and just letting it play in real time, really. So uh, the rest of these videos took no time to cut together. They're all five minutes a piece, so they took maybe about ten minutes to cut together, going back and forth, back and forth. And then, you know, once I'm done, going back and looking over, uh, playing them through to make sure that they do uh, the cuts do make sense. Sometimes I have to shift them around a frame or two, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to speed through this, so go away, come back later. So I just finished cutting through the rest of the sequence, so very quickly I'm going to trim all that fat off of there, get rid of that last cut here, transition out, and I still have an intro. Uh, an intro that goes at the beginning and end, a motion graphic that I've got to go dig through my hard drives and find, but this is just to get the basic cut locked down. So now what we want to do is go through and select all of your video clips, remove effects, motion, yes, and now everything is back to 100% of the screen, filling the screen in its entirety. So from here, uh, I'm going to export this out, send this over to uh, Aaron Soch, and he's the audio guy, and he'll go through and clean up all the audio and make this sound real good. Um, and I'm going to take this through After Effects and do a quick color pass, nothing too fancy, but something to really pretty it up to make sure it all matches, because you can see the difference between these two clips here, between the wide here, it's really flat, a little bit on the red side, and the close up here, a lot more contrasty, a lot more punchy. Um, and a little bit greener. So there is some balancing of the colors that needs to go, uh, that needs to be done. So uh, the only other thing from here is I'm gonna go through and find her slides. So find Jen's slides, so in images. I've already set the default image duration to 15 seconds each. So each of these JPEGs will last 15 seconds. That's the uh, length that they're supposed to be, that they were presented as. So that's her first one, so we're going to take 113, and I'm going to skip that last one. So 113 to that one, drag and drop onto this third track here, and boom. Do a transition at the beginning, transition at the end. I'll have to go through and crop this one off a little bit sooner. And what we want to do is put this into the upper left corner. So I'm going to go into one, go into the effect controls, motion, Move it on over to the left side, bring it up, select copy, hit copy, select all the rest of the clips, nope, didn't copy it, copy, select all the clips, paste attributes, motion, and there we go, all of our slides are up there, and they are changing up 
as they should be. So in time with how they appeared, uh, she's got a screen behind her with all these slides that appear. So uh, each speaker gets to about 20 slides, uh, about 15 seconds each. So it, the, the talk lasts for exactly five minutes. Um, so her slides are synced up to how they were presented on the screen. So it makes sense now. They appear as they should. And now we're all done. So I'm gonna hit save, export, send this over to sound, dump this into color, do some touching up, add the intro to the beginning and end, and there we go, our video is done. So that's how you cut in real time, uh, very quickly in uh, how you set up your project file and how you cut uh, two, uh, two camera footage uh, clips, sorry, the footage of two cameras together and sync it up to a separate sound clip. So hope you enjoyed and uh, you can check these out uh, let's see, Ignite Guelph has a YouTube page, so if you go into YouTube and you search for Ignite Guelph, it'll pop up here. You can see the last two Ignite Guelphs that uh, were held last year. We hold it every spring and fall. In fact, if you, where, where's that sexy, sexy man here? Hey, where, where am I? I had a talk on here. Oh, there I am. Ha. I spoke at the first one about visual effects. So yeah, there's the intro there as well that I'm gonna be adding. So you can go in, check out all the past talks, um, enjoy them, and maybe I'll see you at the next Ignite Wealth. See ya.